Now, this week is a massive test for the government. It will hand down its first full federal budget at a time when households and business are under pressure from rising costs and higher interest rates. The government is flush with cash because of 50-year lows in unemployment and booming revenues from commodity companies. But the government knows that excess spending will only add to inflation, pushing up interest rates and list the lifting the unemployment rate. The magic pudding full of cash could be quite different in the future. But the Reserve Bank governor, who raised rates this week as an insurance policy against inflation, still thinks he can land the economy softly. Now, on that delicate balance, late this week, I spoke with Finance Minister Katie Gallagher. We talk about the surplus and spending, but I started by asking her to explain the broad parameters the budget is trying to achieve. Yeah, so uh, thanks for having me on, Ross. I really like talking to you um, ahead and post-budget, so I hope we can do that as well. Uh, look, I think when we started the process, um, we were very clear that inflation was the key challenge in the economy. We had to be mindful of that uh, in terms of how we were framing the budget. Uh, obviously, inflation comes, you know, in a couple of ways. It impacts in the budget in the sense of uh, having to show restraint, but also it's impacting on people's lives in the community and people expecting the government to be able to deal with that. So I think finding the right balance between, you know, sensible and affordable cost of living relief um, whilst we're in this sort of high inflation environment was the kind of... That was the big picture architecture that we had to make all of our decisions under. Uh, and uh, running alongside that, I guess, was our fiscal strategy about wanting to repair the budget over time um, and have a, a story about, um, you know, opportunities in the economy going forward. So I say probably those four things, cost of living, um, dealing with inflation, um, showing restraint and um, ensuring our fiscal strategy objectives are being met uh, were pretty critical to um, our overall decision making. But it's got to be said that inflation is also good for a budget. It inflates wages. You've got record numbers in work right now. But, you know, the ultimate in showing people you're serious about budget repair, of course, is to produce a surplus. And you've got to be pretty close right now if you're not already there. Well, we've made no secret, the Treasurer and I, that there's... And, you know, commentators um, and experts like yourself, Ross, and others uh, have been, you know, watching this closely, have seen that, you know, the, the sort of short-term um, improvement is real, it's substantial, uh, but the longer-term issues facing the budget, the structural issues, uh, remain. And so, you know, whilst we welcome... Uh, any improvement, uh, because it does help with that longer-term budget story, um, particularly how we respond with that. And, and in October, you saw that we banked um, the vast majority of the upgrades to budget repair. Um, you know, how we respond to that over the longer term um, is critical. And so, uh, yes, there's a welcome improvement, but that still... Um, doesn't take away from the fact that there's a lot of people that are doing it tough and we need to respond to that and we need to repair the budget and we need to repair our supply chains and we need to look at what are the op um, opportunities going forward for the economy in the areas of, you know, growth and productivity. And, and I think that's the... Uh, I guess one of the major things I've um, been in... Well, come to understand in a lot more granular way is that the budget is, you know, hundreds if not thousands of decisions... Uh, to land in the final product. Um, and so it's not a matter of just doing one thing or another. It's actually how you find the right balance across a whole range of pressures uh, and calls for action and things that we need to do uh, and things that are the right things to do. And you'll see all of that, or you'll see the results of that on Tuesday night. But Katie, the optics of it politically, it's important from your economic credibility point of view. If you can land a surplus in your first term of government, it would be impressive. Even if you explain the cost pressures in the future are going to be different and also more difficult. Well, I think the you know Jim and I take a, a sort of a longer term view on on this, and you know I think the message that we want Australians to understand is that their government takes uh, their budget and budget responsibility seriously in terms of the restraint and the repair that we need to ensure happens so that the budget is more resilient uh, and more able to deal with shocks that come down the down the road, uh, and we, we, you will see that on Tuesday night. Um, I, I make no... I don't pretend at all that the 
The short-term improvement that we're seeing um, is welcome. It is because not only does it um, allow us to undertake that important budget repair work, it, you know, it, it translates into, you know, impact on our debt and our interest on our debt, which is one of those top five growing programs in the government, uh, and that helps over the longer term. So it is absolutely welcome. But I think the the message that uh, the Treasurer and I would like people to understand is that the the broader, you know, it's not going to be solved in one budget or just because revenues are good in one year. We have a longer term story about fiscal repair and we're absolutely committed to it. Well, that goes to the initiative announced like this week that aged care workers, 250,000 of them, will get a 15% pay rise over the next four years. But that will cost $11.3 billion dollars and that shows that even relatively modest initiatives over a large group of people adds up significantly on the budget. Yes, that's right. I mean, um, obviously, the aged work, age care workforce is a large workforce. It's going to grow, though, and become uh, larger, as is any area of the care economy. So whilst um, this does have a significant cost, we see it as an investment and it's a huge opportunity for us should we get the settings right in the care economy, uh, because it is such a significant growth area on the services side. Um, and, you know, we made a commitment to fund those those wages. 90% of that workforce are women, undervalued and underpaid for a long period of time. And this is essentially paying, playing some catch up on that. Uh, and we've made room for it in the budget. But this is where it comes down to, you know, budget priorities. And we have to weigh up a whole range of things. Um, and I think you'll see in this budget that it's, it's a, a strong budget for women. It's a strong labour budget. Um, but it's also, we haven't taken our eye off that, you know, the issue we've been talking about, about restraint and repair, which is also just as important from our point of view. Well, so let's go to that point of restraint. The NDIS, the National Disability Insurance Scheme, now, its own actuary says the costs will grow from $28 billion to $60 billion within six years. The government, I know, is trying to curb that growth rate. So how have you gone about doing that as you've tried to prepare this budget? Yeah, so Bill Shorten's been doing a huge amount of work with the board and with participants in the NDIS. I mean, our overarching message on the NDIS is we want to make sure that the NDIS is, as, uh, is exactly what was always intended with that program, uh, but it is growing at a rate that, you know, if it continues at this rate, um, is unsustainable uh, from, from, certainly from the finance point of view, growing at 14% uh, is, is significantly ahead of any other government program. And so moderating that, moderating that growth uh, is important, but it's important for the sustainability of the NDIS as well. Um, Bill's um, given some speeches where he sort of outlined some of his thinking about how you moderate some of that growth, um, and he'll work very closely with the board. We've got the review coming down towards the end of this year that will also give us some recommendations about how to proceed. Uh, but I think it was important that in National Cabinet um, discuss this. They've, they've agreed that this is something that should be a priority uh, and I think it, it, we can deliver it but we want to deliver it in partnership with participants of that scheme uh, and other stakeholders. So as you frame this budget there's also much commentary about the Reserve Bank. It's raising interest rates to curb inflation. You've mentioned inflation there and the budget but there are pressures inside your own party about spending priorities but that, of course, can add to inflation and ultimately to higher interest rates for longer that will hurt Australian families. Yeah, I, I mean, I think my opening answer to your opening question was around that being, you know, really critical part of the architecture with which we started framing this budget was uh, certainly that the decisions we take don't make the job of the Reserve Bank harder, that we work hand in hand with the work they're doing to uh, drive down inflation. Uh, and so that has factored into our decisions. But, uh, we, you know, where we make um, those investments, we have been mindful of that, absolutely. Um, but, you know, budgets will make investments. Um, they need to make investments. We've had no shortage of free advice about what those investments should be. And what you'll see on Tuesday night is the ERC and the government's kind of final kind of uh, decisions across the board, across every department, every policy area, um, you know, mindful of, of the economic circumstances we're in and finding, trying to find that right balance, which, you know, you'll all see and no doubt commentate on on Tuesday night. 
just a final one for you. As you're doing the budget here, did you actually have half an eye on the ratings agencies to make sure that Australia keeps its AAA credit rating? Well, we've been clear that, you know, we're deadly serious about having a, you know, delivering on our fiscal uh, policy, um, our strategy that we outline in the budget. We want the message and, you know, I, I think the ratings agency um, certainly keep an eye on this. Um, you know, we're mindful of doing the right thing by the Australian people, but also being seen as responsible budget managers. Um, and we want to do that not just for the ratings agencies, we want to do that for good reason, which is making sure the budget is on a more sustainable footing, that we repair the budget, that we deal with the debt burden that we've inherited, um, that we re where we can, we reduce that, where we bank revenue upgrades as much as we can um, to budget repair, but still find room for these essential services that Australians rely on. So um, we're guided by all of those things, Ross. Um, it's, a, it's a very, um, well, it's been a very intense period trying to, I think, land a whole range of decisions across a whole range of areas. And again, people will see the results of that and judge that on, on budget night. Katie Gallagher, it's always good to chat to you. Many thanks for your time. Thanks very much, Ross.